Welcome to Drinking Broettes, brought to you by GhostBed.com. Oh my I know, Lord. we're weird. We're real people now. We are real. GhostBed took a chance. I'm like spitting everywhere. It's okay. This is, we just got back from Vegas. We are just GhostBed gonna... <laughs> took a chance. They did. I'm I so know. happy. You guys. We have a legit sponsor now. We apologize for everything that happens in this episode. I know. So we are... Just back, hot off the presses from Vegas. Yeah. How do you feel? I feel exhausted. I feel mentally, physically, and emotionally drained. But very, it's weird because I'm also really excited. Oh my too. gosh, me too. Like, it was an amazing trip. Oh, it was great. Amazing. But I think, you know, like where you're coming off of it, right? Yeah. That it just yeah. hit. Like, <laughs> I lost my voice for two days. Like, on the flight home, I couldn't even say, like, excuse me. No. Right? Because I, I was like, excuse Just dying. Yeah. And even the, ne- the next day, you know, I, I couldn't even oh, talk yeah. to my husband. Yeah. My voice was gone. Um, but yeah, it, no, it was great. Great. Super amazing. Nothing bad. And then it just like, yeah, all came to an end. Have you ever done ecstasy or MDMA? <laughs> no. You haven't? No. I'm Here missing, we go. I know. I'm missing out. Oh my gosh. You need to do. I've done shrooms. Is that different? And that's good. It's a little bit different, but I think everyone should do either pure MDMA or ecstasy at least okay. once in their life because it's never bad. You know, like oh, mushrooms, it's not. sometimes it can be like bad trip. Oh, I or did like mushrooms with feel... drinking a ton of alcohol. Was it good? I, I was, it was great until I was coming off of it and then I was really, I just wanted to fight everyone. I was really violent. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of what I'm getting into <laughs> except for with ecstasy, nobody's in the history of man is if you're just doing good ecstasy, yeah. you've never had a bad time. It's oh, all okay. just love and you just like, you maybe tell the wrong person that you love them. That sounds, that's I'm, the only right, bad right. thing that would happen is like if you do it and uh, you're kind of just dating somebody or something and yeah. you're like, okay, I love you. Love you. I'm in love with you. That's the only bad thing that goes to you. Yeah, and then you're like, <laughs> oh shit. Like, what did I ruin it? Yeah. Wait. So you're saying that's how Vegas feels so, like? Because it was such a good high, so good, and yeah. we got so much love, and everyone was so I supportive, know. and it was like a dream. It really was like a dream. Yeah. So when you we came back, it was just kind of like that feeling of like back into your real life, know. you know, back to where people don't know you. It's fu- I can no have, one knows I like who that, the though. fuck you are. Yeah, no, I really it was good. Like that. I know. Back I'm to like, anonymity. I know. Right? Like I'm not gonna be judged or like yeah. in some spotlight or just everyone staring, waiting for me to fuck up or yeah. something. I know. While it was really good, even the like the I don't even want to say bads because I yeah, think yeah. even like the little bumps. I think along the way, there's so much to learn from yeah. it that I felt like this is a really big eye opening trip. Yeah. Right. So I think with anything, when you have a bump along the way and while mm-hmm. it might suck and we can really, of course, get into our head with it. Yeah. And just really let it get us down. Yeah. If you have a positive outlook on it going like, wow, I got to know these people's true colors. Yeah. Right. It's a good thing. Right. I think I think I think it's, it's a hard great thing. And it's hard for girls to realize that or, or for people, mm-hmm. I think, because we do. Some of us are, I think you're not a people pleaser, but I think you want to be good with everyone. I definitely Same don't with me. please people by any no, means. No, but you also but do want people be, to like me. There you go. Does that make sense? You're not going to do go above and beyond or not be yourself to Correct. please them, but you really do want. I will not this, kiss your ass. And it's an unrealistic thing to hope for, right? It which is. is I, which is what I've realized is this very unrealistic to say, I want everyone to like me, right? Correct. Because then you're not, A, having a clear opinion about something. Correct. Because not everyone's going to like that. Or B, you're just boring. You're mm-hmm. vanilla. Like, I'm going to say things that people might not like because it's my unique point of view and I don't give a fuck, yeah. right? Or either do you. But at the same time, when people start to, like, fall off or your friends, people that you thought were friends, or you start getting comments about the things that you're saying, it really becomes real. So sure. where you're like, oh, not everyone's going to like me. And I think I've maybe spent my whole life wanting that. And I think it's different now. Like now yeah. I just want to be myself and I want the people that are uh, messaging. Like, I just like that you guys are yourself. I like that you mm-hmm. don't give a fuck. I may not agree with everything you say, but at least you fucking say it. Yeah. Um. So I'm, I'm, I'm. I think I'm going to be talking more to those people. Me too. Moving forward. Well, the thing is too, I is like, 
I just real you realize with situations and everything that happens in life how short life is and just even with like Kobe Bryant mm-hmm. and his daughter Gianna losing her life and not just some Holy but like shit. everyone else in that helicopter crash and you know just whether you're losing people that are close to you or whether you see people die you realize that's a very sobering moment in your life where yeah. you realize life is very short and yeah. life is very precious and the thing is too is like why spend the time and energy and waste it on people that like are fake or that don't really like you or that weren't there during your struggles yeah. but want to be part of your success right yeah. and so i think it's a very good eye-opening experience that while it does hurt and while it does suck to know that you know, obviously not everyone's gonna like you because that's mm-hmm. completely a false reality yeah. but number two that maybe the people that you thought did care for you really truly don't while it could be sad and while you might have a sad moment it's completely fine to sit there and go later on you know what this is good i'm glad it happened sooner rather than later yeah why waste time and energy on them if they really don't care i have bigger fish to fry Right. And here's the thing, too. I hear this all the time and it's true. And it sounds kind of like I don't want to say boastful when you say it. Mm -hmm. But people say all the time, like if you have haters, you're doing something right. Mm -hmm. And to think to yourself, right, that people hate you so much that they're spending so much time and energy talking about you. Like, really? Like, how ironic is that? You hate me so much that you're spending so much time talking about me. Yeah. Go on. I don't care. It's not bothering me or at least. I shouldn't let it affect me, yeah. right? And so I think that was another thing of the trip. Like, while it was so amazing, of course, you're going to have those bumps and those little kind of like, oh, that sucks, right? Mm-hmm. But at the end of it all, I was like, no, that's good. Because yeah. I think it was a good eye-opening experience for everyone involved. And it was, and it's cleansing it too, is right? Cleansing. So once you get over the initial human reaction of i want everyone to like me mm-hmm. what do you mean there's people that don't like me like what? that stupid <laughs> fucking i don't know why i didn't realize that that would happen i know it's but at idiotic, the same time what but... did i say to you in vegas because you guys this just all happened really quickly and i love I all of it so now we're just sort of grappling with this a little bit i'm not going to change anything about myself yeah. you're not going to change anything about yourself or apologize for anything but when we were starting to get down about it, both of us just like kind of reading some comments and getting like down um, what I said to you, cause I've been doing it with like the guys and Ross yeah. Patterson for like three, three, four years now is that if you focus on the people that are saying bad things about you, you're not your best self for the people that really like you. Correct. Right. So there are people out there, whether it's five people, whether it's fucking hundreds it doesn't matter even those five people that really like me I don't want to be concerned with the fucking assholes yeah and then you guys don't get the best of me which is like I really don't I mean I really don't think that I'm a mean person I just kind of like say what I fucking think and so do you so well the thing is too if you let it get to you you're dimming your light right yeah and so those people are like oh the girls seem kind of down or they seem different like I don't ever want someone because too many people came up to us and was like, dude, I listen to you on the way to work. I, I listen to you when I'm like changing my kid's fucking diaper so and I'm like fucking so honored. Right. So for those people, I don't want to be like me, me, because yeah. then it's like then I'm bringing them fucking Correct. down. Like we are here to keep you company and to hang out with you for an hour. And Absolutely. we don't ever like, I hate those people that go out, even though they don't they're like depressed. Uh-huh. It's sort of like either stay home or find one good friend to talk to sure. because you don't want to bring down the fucking well, group. The thing, like too. don't come out all fucking depressed. Right. Like be you real know, with yourself, be real with yourself. Be like, you know what? I shouldn't be out right now because I am not, I'm not in a good place. Right. Well, either and you don't want to put on a fake face either. People can tell like, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> acting all nuts. Right. <laughs> and you're like, do you really do you like my fake do- face? <laughs> <laughs> Like, do you really feel like that though? Like, don't. It's fine. Listen, I understand. Like in life, there's gonna be sad moments, bummer mm. moments, shitty moments, mm. all those moments. It's great, and it's totally and fine we're gonna to be deal real with, with that. And we'll be real with that too. But we won't be fucking. We don't want to. We're not gonna bring your day down. Pity. No. We're gonna be like, you know what? There's always a lesson to learn, and guess what? Guess what? We learned it. We learned it, yeah. and I love it. Yeah. And it's always a good. And it's cleansing. A silver lining to shit. You know what I mean? Howard Stern said in radio 
the only the way to do be good in radio is to have a clear cut opinion about something mm-hmm. no matter what it is and just go for it so you know to funny? the godfather the, of you, fucking radio that you bring him up too is because i was talking of course i talked to my husband about everything yeah right? and he sees me in my lowest moments and he just was like you know what he's like do you know how many people hate it howard stern hated when he started do you know how many radio stations cut him off when he hated. first started yeah and, and look now at he's now. like beloved he is like the king of radio i know in, a lot of people's minds, right? But guess what? He stuck true to himself. I know. He was who he was without any apologies. And while you're going to get a lot of flack probably along the way, it's like, you know what? What do I just like live my life for other people? Fuck that. No, because then you'll be boring. Like I've well, said Well, and you'll it. be sad and depressed. Like who wants that? Yeah. Like I'm me. Because even if you do I can try be a bitch and please, sometimes, even but- if you do try and please everyone, you're still not going to. And then you're going to be both not yourself yeah. and not pleasing everybody and nobody's fucking happy i have uh guy fieri oh wait we're in our new oh my set God. you guys we are totally in our new set we you just guys, got in the zone we have our own place we are big girls now we have our own sponsor we got our own set <laughs> so yeah we have our fucking logo here i know have, so it's a work in progress it is. guys but at least we're in our own place the drinking bros have theirs ross Paris revolution ours. has theirs we have ours and you know what too and we're going us, to yeah. put up on the instagram and the facebook account the p.o box yeah. for you guys to send any swag and stuff that you guys a picture want to. of you and your family we'll put it up sure i mean I, look i want the if you if any of you guys draw out there i want an oh, amazing yeah. hand-drawn picture of post malone because he's my lover oh, that's right we were gonna get a picture of him and put it in one of those like <laughs> you know, family like, frames well like, you know like olin mills or like glamour shots where they had like yes. the white like fog around you that's how i want a picture of post malone you love him i'm so such a turd much i know i joke with my husband all the time he and i was like because he was talking to me about the um porn star that we had mm-hmm. right that we had talked with and which you guys will which you guys will definitely that hear that episode because i've like watched one of his videos and i told my husband like oh nothing to worry about the only man i'll leave you for is post and he just laughs about it like he's just like, he's like like that okay like that would really <laughs> happen and i but just he joke. is yeah he's tall you guys he's tall as shit i know he's I six four Ooh, give it to me i know and like so sensitive. I thought it was really cute the picture he posted the other day when he was on uh, on Instagram. He was like in all yellow, like a yellow puffy jacket, oh God, and he I had Uggs on so much. And he had his like feet like 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 what kind of like doing? crooked, like me, like how I what stand. What was he doing? <laughs> no, but I love. Was that. that on purpose? I just love him so much. Apparently, he's sponsored by uh, by Uggs. And I think it's fucking hilarious because he literally did like the whole like can't it girl stance. Right. I think deep down he is kind of a basic white bitch. I mean, really? I mean, I kind of am deep down sad. Oh, we all are. Yeah. I don't I don't even think it's that deep with me. I think it's pretty, pretty much on the surface. How much of a basic white bitch I am. But he's doing something with Doritos now called like post Lamon. Mm. yeah like post oh yeah. limon yeah um, like for lime. yeah and he did like a commercial so with it it's pretty cool that's a bad flavor but go get it Good, go, go on get it. it go get it posty go get it posty <laughs> um but anyways i was saying guy fieri is behind me here he is yeah. one of my uh idols for that reason i know it's a weird is one he? to have but he no matter what has just been himself he's been the blonde and he gets so much shit the blonde for hair. his hair his yeah. hair his look the flames everything and he has oh, yeah he wears leaned all those flame into it he posts any meme that you make fun of him he will post Does it he? on his instagram good for him he loves it his best friend is matthew mcconaughey which i think that that relationship to me is like the sweetest cutest thing i've ever heard Aww, i had no idea and they both kind of bonded over the fact of like guy fieri got big really quickly okay and they bonded over the fact of like I don't want it like wanting to change this exact kind of conversation. Like, do I stay true to myself? Like people are really giving me shit for my look, my whole thing. And I think Matthew, if I could dream of what the conversation was, it was just yeah. like, dude, you just got to like be yourself, like just stay true to yourself and like keep going. And yeah. he has come out. He's gone through some shit. Has he? And he has come out on the other side. He's one of the fucking richest, coolest, like, didn't change one thing about him good for him yeah how do you grow to fame so quickly so he won um he won a contest on so he won like food network star but what he did with that win 
is amazing, right? So it's like anybody can win oh, these sure. little things. But American a lot of them Idol thing phase out though. It's what out. you do with that opportunity. And we talked about this in Vegas a little bit of like when that one moment hits, what are you gonna do mm-hmm. with that flame? Are you gonna like build it into a big fire or yeah. are you gonna like party or not take it or think that it's gonna happen yeah. all the time and just let it like fade out? So a lot of them have, but he's one of the only ones that now is in the fold of cooking network and billionaire millionaire on top of trillionaire um and just took that opportunity to the max level and i love I it know, I just he has like awesome. what does he have in that picture like onion ring oh, like yeah. wolverine claws or some yeah, shit <laughs> like i love it this is the most ridiculous thing ever right i know of course this is jesse's idol right fat He's chubby chaser. I'm a chubby chaser. Him and Bourdain. Him and Bourdain. So oh I did my gosh. used to like, I did used to like Bourdain. He used to be my, my man. Yeah. But. Well, you got a mug of his too. Well, we're yeah, I have a mug there. and a candle of his. It's but what cute. happened with him is he was such an asshole and he fucking killed uh-huh. himself, which I was really mad about. And then Guy Fieri stepped in as my stepdad. Okay. And I was fighting it. <laughs> I was definitely like. No, Guy Fieri. No, stepdad. you are not gonna. You were not gonna fill the place of Bourdain. I'm and not gonna he call finally, you dad. He finally like won me over, and now I call him dad. Do you? Yeah, because <laughs> I was like, you're actually such a better person than Bourdain ever was. But I was fighting it because he wasn't cool. <laughs> Fieri is not cool. He is a dorky motherfucker. But I like that though. But That's I, why I like Post it Malone too because I think exactly. he's dorky, but he's cute and he's yes. himself. Yeah, he doesn't care. Yeah, I don't know if it was true or not, but they showed him on the commercial, on the Doritos commercial, getting a Doritos tattoo on his face. I'm sure he is. I don't know if he did, but part of me was like, "Did you? Don't you think he would? He's just that kind of person. He has. Too bad you couldn't make a um a tattoo like scratch and sniff, <laughs> or like scratch and lick, oh right? Where like. You make it food on your face and someone can like go up to it, scratch it and lick it and be like, schnozberries tastes like like schnozberries. (laughs) The only way to do that is every morning you'd have to put a little Dorito. I know. Perfume on there. Like a fucking dirt bag. And you would But Post would do it. He's so dedicated. He would do it. He's dedicated to the fucking weirdness for sure. Um, Should we get to our sponsors? We shall. Because I have like a little surprise for you too. You have a surprise for me? I mean, I don't know. Just go oh to sponsors God. and I want to oh show you that. <laughs> okay. So, of course, we have ghostbed.com. They've, took a chan- they've taken a chance on a couple of old gals like us. Thank you. And uh, we are so appreciative. And what's awesome is it's like the best product in the world, believing mm-hmm. in you. Um, Because we're able to just say ghostbed.com. I don't have to worry at all that anyone will be disappointed with this product. I could literally just say, I promise you, get a ghost bed. You will not be disappointed, both with customer service Mm -hmm. and the product. So I have no problem saying, go get a ghost bed, right? And I think they have right now promo code 25%. What is it? Mm -hmm. I think promo code 25%. Um. And they have a flash sale for 25% off. Uh, and as you're going to get one. As to always. 15% off for military and first responders. they give a shit. Uh, government workers. Yeah. Like, it's great. You guys yeah. can go down there and see what they have available. And then also always, like, $200 off on a full bundle with, like, two free pillows. Like, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah. Um, at all. And another thing too, I know I said it before that I really love is when people are so honest, especially like consumers, right? Or the um the company and they yeah. sit there and go, Hey, these are all of our um competitors. Yeah. And by the way, here's oh, the difference do. between ours and Casper and ours and Purple, whatever else. If you guys want to figure that out, they'll lay it out for you. They do for sure. Um, and you're gonna get you're gonna get a fucking base. I know, I I'm excited. Base. We will. The um, adjustable base, you guys, is amazing. The Ghost Bed Lux is probably what you should get too. Mm-hmm. And um, they actually have some new products. So check them out. Do they? Yeah. Um, so that's ghostbed.com forward slash drinking, drinking bros. bros. We're underneath the umbrella of it's drinking bros, drinking bros, and broettes and Ross Patterson Revolution. Yep. We're all just kind of combined underneath one, just like we're all on the same easy. YouTube channel too. So just one stop shop. Yeah. There you go. So, and what's the um, So, I feel like Pilot Peter needs to give these out. What is this? <laughs> yeah, so, 
<laughs> oh my god. Okay, so like, so first of all, I have to do this officially. So by the way, Chris got me this at a fucking gas station. And I was like, could you imagine if Peter Pilot like really gave these out to the girls like Jesse? But really seriously and didn't like, say super anything. Seriously, like a fucking gigantic <laughs> ass rose and was like, Jesse, would you accept this rose? Absolutely. Yeah, like every what we, time. There we go. I was waiting for you to say that because there's girls that are like, oh every my god, time. always like in always. my heart of hearts. I was like, hoping, I was hoping you'd say that. Why do you always save me to the last? <laughs> of course, I'm the first. All the fucking things all that the they fucking say. Time. It's on tonight. We're filming I know. before, which is unfortunate. So well, I got a little. I got a little. Info. Oh, you got an in. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna spoil her. Well, it's a not really bit. spoiler. Well, yeah, I guess it'll come out tonight. I know. It so smells like smell a gas station. It? Does it smell like a fucking gas station? So it I sniffed. Like smoke in the I mix. sniffed it and I was like, oh, it smells like Ooh. chips and hot dogs. <laughs> Thank you. Somebody return this for but this sure. Is gonna be in this is our... a returned item. <laughs> That's going to be in this room now. Oh, yes. I love right? it. This is like we're gonna the find rose. a place for it. The final rose. Um, Yay, we're filling up the set. So, of course, I'm like finding, off, finding out stuff on TikTok. Okay. Right? And so, okay, I think her name's Victoria, right? So she yeah. was the one who was like super self-conscious when she was going down the runway. Did you see that episode? She was in the fucking lingerie. Yes. The one that was like, I don't want to be Victoria. And F. she fucking crushed it, right? Yeah. So dark haired chick. Yeah. She had a little conversation with Peter saying like, hey, I just feel like I don't belong here. I feel really insecure. By the way, she's fucking stunning. Okay. She's stunning. And by the way, she's not that insecure. But go ahead. No. Um, but she, you know, they had. But it really helped she had for her, her storyline. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And so I, what happens is Peter decides to take her out on a one-on-one -on -one date tonight. Uh -huh. Okay. And of course, you know, at the end of the, each date night, they have a fucking like country music star coming to play. Okay. She I has saw this a Chase bit. Rice, who she fucking dated. Okay. Chase Rice is her ex-boyfriend and he's the one singing a song for her and fucking... But this is why Peter. This is why the like Hannah, um, Colton, all of them end up fucking hating The Bachelor because the producers pull shit like this on them. Absolutely. And Peter, when when you hear him say, so I didn't know this, but I kind of like from the teaser could sort of surmise that that happened. Yeah. But he just goes, "What?" And you could see him, and they always look off. So they go like, "What?" And like, they look over. Like, really, you would do to this to me, producer? That they. They like totally act like they're their friend. We'll take care of you, yeah. Peter. Just let us know. Like, talk to us whenever you need anything. Mm -hmm. And he looks over and is like, What? And Colton did the same thing. Hannah did it many times where they're well, just I'll tell like, you this right Fuck now. Fuck you, dude. It's it's fucked up. It while, while it's fucked up, so many people are gonna be uh, like, Yeah, well, this is TV, like this yeah. is what you get. No, you're and right. you're they right. have to bring in the ratings and they you're have right. to bring in the viewers. And guess what? People will like drama gets people to keep watching right. drama like and chris harrison will be like the most dramatic season of the bachelor sure. ever yes. like every single fucking year like yeah, it gets worse because yeah. they try to get the stuff so while they are good at their job i would hate to have them as friends in my life oh my like, god do you know what i mean like all day long like bringing me like it's just the epitome of like i know hollywood of like stuff like that where you're just like you fucking asshole like really and i guarantee yeah. that she didn't think that that was ever going to happen and at the no. same time too like i guess no, just this last they time don't tell them um like two girls knew each other and you know like yeah they yeah, purposely yeah. like the the producers know even though they hide it like they're not stupid so do you think that hannah comes back again and that they're engaged right now that's the big rumor right now no you don't uh -uh. okay based upon what else what do you I, know oh well i'm saying like based upon what i saw kind of a little bit with dancing with the stars with her okay she seemed to really grow from dancing with the stars all right so she's not and really, really crush yeah. on her i forget on who, her own, like yeah. on that dude that she was with okay. um and you can tell too that when they showed a sneak peek of the bachelor coming and how she was like all snuggling up with peter again Got she kind of like looked at the guy she was dancing with and like they kind of did one of these things where like thank god i grew from okay. this and i'm learning a lot more about myself and i didn't need to go, need to go back there okay because you and i talked about this before i think a little bit i don't know if we talked about it on the podcast but i mean they literally had her straight on like after oh yeah no like, so, so there how emotional she was yeah so like it was literally right after they broke up mm -hmm. and she got turned down by two dudes kinda. yeah yeah that's a, a big slap yeah in the so face. she was definitely so she went for the last one fragile but it seemed like it was after dancing with the stars because we as an audience have yeah. already seen her seen win yeah. kill it like her thing so like at, for us it was like 
why is she so fucking emotional right now? No. But what you don't realize is that they get him right back right into production. I mean, two weeks after. So they had just broken up. Well, and I think that's why a lot of these girls, too, say like, hey, to the bachelor, right? Mm-hmm. Or bachelorette. Mm-hmm. Are you guys really ready for this? Yeah. Because you just were supposedly in love, preparing to marry this person. Right. And now, like, we're going to try dating you. Like, right. literally what we are right now is all a fuck ton of rebounds. Yeah. Bounds. Yeah. Rebounds. Rebounds. We're a bunch of Reeboks. What a Reeboks? <laughs> so, but someone said, too, which I think this is true. We need to, we need to get this. We need to manifest some things right now, okay. right? Okay. Let's do it. So... I got. I asked on social media. So if you guys aren't following us, follow our IG page at Drinking Brewettes Podcast. Um, same thing on Facebook, Drinking Brewettes Podcast, and TikTok. Mm, mm, mm. Charlie She's Classic me, I know. got you super excited she for got, TikTok. So we interviewed Charlie Classic, which if you don't know, with He's Heather. A, yeah. With Heather. He's an interesting. I love him, dude. Um, if you're a hardcore crazy feminist, you may not like him, mm. but um, if you're like okay, <laughs> if you're okay with uh, women of uh, making any choice that they want and doing whatever they want to do, yeah. then you'll like him. But anyway, he got me excited about yeah. it because he was just like, dude, like you've got to post then, on here. And I'm like, okay, so we'll post And then I looked clips. at you and was like, what did Told I, you. What did I, I say? And but I like, uh, if you guys aren't following us on there, I asked who would you guys like if you had to pick one person yeah. that you guys would like for us to have on the podcast. And someone said, hey, I definitely think you guys should get someone who's on The Bachelor or Bachelorette. Oh and God. to spill like all the secrets and all the shit yeah. that they have to do and they can and cannot talk about and say. Because there's a lot of YouTube videos where they talk about these things. Yeah. Where they purposely get like a laundry list of all the drinks they like and keep them li- liquor up all night long. Sleep oh, yes. deprived. Like, oh, yes. All this dramatic shit. You know what? I would. We have a couple degrees of separation from Colton. And he actually was very, what? yeah, through like Black Rifle and H Factor Water and this like crazy thing. Okay. He was actually on another podcast and was really honest about the producers fucking him over. I would love to have him on. Yeah. I and would, he's cool too. So like I yeah. would love, love open invitation Colton to talk to him about yeah. it because he was just like, dude, like I really like this girl. I thought that the producers were my friends. And they fucked me over. I know. And he had that moment too. And he talks about it on this other podcast where he looked over at his friend, quote yeah. unquote, and was just like, you fucking asshole. When they flew in Cassie's dad to talk to her mm-hmm. without him knowing. So anyway. You know what? And the thing is so too, this is, this is why like I've particularly said to anyone who's trying to get me into TV, no, I will not. So when oh, they were yeah, so exact. persistent on getting me on Naked and Afraid, Oh yeah! All I kept telling them was, "I don't trust you guys." Don't and they were trust like, "What do you, you mean?" And I was like, "Here's the thing: I could be as like peace. I will just be like as politically correct on everything. Totally. I will do everything perfect. Totally. I still might find not a even way have to any emotional it. moment and like crush it, but I still feel like you guys are somehow still going to find drama. Yes. Whether it's trying to stir up a relationship and a romance between me and someone, whether it's like one time I stub my foot and I'm cursing and you show that yeah, part like yeah, over and yeah, over again, yeah. you guys can literally make me out to be anyone who I want to be. And the scary part of that is like, hey, I'm still like in the military. Why would I want that yeah. reputation to be out there to the world? And then, by the way, I didn't like that. I was going to be naked. But that is the scariest part is they do what they have to do to get views. Because guess what? Boring people aren't going to get people to watch the episode. Yeah. And a lot of times in the commercials, they show all the drama mm-hmm. to get people enticed enough to watch mm-hmm. it. And then you realize that you're like, that had nothing to do yeah. with that at all. Mm-hmm. Or they'll edit clips to where they'll show someone talking and they'll show someone else's face in the reaction that looks yes. very like rude. Yes. And then you realize it had nothing to do, right, with that yeah. conversation. So you were very smart to be like, I just don't trust you guys because I don't. Not that it would have hurt your career like moving forward. No, I don't in think anything like that, but, but still, still you just don't want to have that taste in your mouth. Mm-mm. You probably wouldn't have even wanted to do this or something, you sure. know, where you're just like, you know what? Fuck it. Like I know how people edit stuff. You'd be afraid to do any interview you know there's people that just like won't talk to the press because they just get fucking misconstrued yeah and edited and anyway isn't that nuts though yeah but yeah so that's that's one person i want to get on to someone from the bachelor the okay podcast. or bachelorette yeah um who else there was there was a mention of britney spears or share and i was like there's no way first like, of all share is not happening while that'd be cool I mean, it'd be uh, amazing, but... <laughs> Do you believe in love after love? 
love maybe she'll come on now because she will feel so loved. insecure about how good that was and she'll have to show us that up. Was terrible. Terrible, but um, it was it was in sync, which is great. Um but that was Britney another Spears, one. Spears. Someone was saying He's very scary. Someone was saying that she I'm is very scared just of her. a hilarious train wreck. And I lo- I watched her yeah, page and I, I went all oh I would want to do, you is. guys, I feel bad for her. And I've said this from day one is that um, I feel bad for her right now. Do you? I Why? think that people are. I, she's. Have you seen her Instagram? I, I Yeah, I saw okay, it. So she's like she's bipolar. I think it's bipolar one or bipolar two or whatever. And um, she's just uh, she's struggling Mm. and her she has people that have propped her up because there's so many people that are making money from her so she's one that i've talked about before where there's too many people's lives livelihood at stake for her to do what she should do which is go home to the south or whatever be with her kids be out of the spotlight Mm. get her meds right get some therapy um and just take care of herself People are not the people surrounding her will not do that for her because they will lose their money train. And so that's so sad how for me, if I saw her, I would just be like, come with me. We're taking you to a rehab. We're taking you away. You can't stop this because she's just like, I'm fine. And she's like a fucking crazy puppet. Lady. Is she? Oh, I've only I only watched a few videos and it was like her doing Mm. yoga and stuff. Mm. And just like it's rough. Hey, guys, like. I'm doing yoga today and she just that's all she was doing or she did like 60 laps in a pool or something I mean her her makeup always like she's just a little bit manic she's a little little manic right now she did look a little rough yeah which I I remember when I was younger looking at her as kind of like an idol right going like oh my god I want to be like her and I was doing her dances and everything oh yeah well she was perfect I mean she was perfect back in the day and then it just slowly you know the extensions was the first thing that I was like, do you remember her horrible extensions that she oh, was starting to get? When, yeah, and when she, she got like a the... millionaire. Yeah. And her, ex- her ex- she can't get well, good extensions. Well, because I feel like she has I mean, people in her life who really truly love her and care for her, right? Instead of just being like, hey, like, oh yeah, that looks great. Like, just like the friends in my life. I don't want them to be like, Oh yeah, Tiffany, like Looks those awesome. shitty extensions look great. Great. We totally can't see them. Can't see them at all. No. Yeah. Like, girl, like They're you're fucking like gorgeous. Popping. Let me, let me help. Like, let me help let you. Me help let me you. fix you like really Plus, quick. Again, you have millions of dollars. We can take you someplace in Vegas. This was in Vegas too. We can take you someplace in Vegas and get you fucking good extensions or oh, sure. let's get a wig on your ass or something. Like, let's just, well, maybe we should have her on so that we can be like good girlfriends to her. You know what I mean? I do. But then yeah. we would get. <laughs> I mean, I just ruined it right now because whoever like, her people are, are not going to let me let anywhere near in. her. Because I'll be like, "Girl, I'm fucking kidnapping you, and I'm taking you a rehab right now, and you're going to fucking be with your babies, and you're going to take care of yourself. Yeah. This is crazy. You have more money than God. Get out of here." Does she though? Because there's a lot of yeah. Okay, because there's yeah. a lot of celebrities sometimes who like seem like they have a lot of money, and either they don't spend it right or they spend it too much. Like they spend too no, much, but she quickly. She's good. They don't invest correctly. She's good. Okay. She's you just had an executor, or her dad has been taking care of her money, and maybe he's fucking spent it all. I don't know, but she's good. Yeah. Like she's good for at this point, she's good for life, okay. and she can fucking go. Like she's at least good enough to be a rich person out where she's from. Is she still doing where. the the Vegas? Um, yeah, I think she's doing either a residency, the residency or. Yeah something or she's working on another thing or maybe okay. she's not doing anything I that's what i mean no i don't idea. know because i think she was at planet hollywood i i can't quote that but i think she yeah, was yeah, and gwen yeah, stefani's yeah. there now okay yeah so, so she may not be doing a residency anymore yeah but she's working on something okay i don't know what well we sorry whoever recommended that we'll just we'll, look we'll put, a, me. we'll put a pin in if that one look if she'll come on i'll talk we'll to put her a pin in that one but her people are not gonna like what i have to say uh t- <laughs> well all. well here's the thing is like i was ex- i was ex- expecting some of the people to be like just hit like some instagram people yeah but they yeah. went straight for oh. this for the moon they and the must stars. think but that makes and I me was, feel good me too i was kind of honored like you we think will, we can we will try yeah uh tom hardy was one and it was Oof. like from a guy a guy was like Oof. my man crush tom hardy Oof. and i was like who else who does not crush he would love to on him although he doesn't really do interviews um really no he'd be a hard 
nut to crack. But here's for the sure. thing too with people like doing. I don't really say. I mean, I don't really know if it's really interviews with us. It's kind of us all us talking to them. Yeah, I guess we are just getting to know them a little bit better. But yeah, we're not like giving them the hard questions like, mm-hmm. "Hey, like mm-hmm. baby mama drama" or like any other shit like that. It's just no. like tell us about your life, and and yeah. then we just smoke and joke with them, kind of. Yeah. So we like do. We only give them two things, one to two things that they. Like, don't want to yeah. talk about everything else. If you have more than two things that you don't want to talk about, we don't have you on because that's fucking boring. But we will give you like, hey, if there's something, some name yeah. we can't say, whatever, like we will absolutely do that. Situation but if you, you have a big up. list of stuff, we're just not going to have those people on. Yeah. And we want to have real, genuine, honest yeah. people too who aren't just going to sit there and bullshit everyone, but they're going to be like, yeah, this is really how it is. And like, I don't really care yeah. if people like want to hear it or not type of thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I think people really respect that more. And we just have conversations with them, like you're saying. So we're not like, so where was your grandmother born? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with that. We're more just like, <laughs> so <laughs> how's your relationship? Cherokee. Yeah. yeah. Are you? <laughs> how's your dick working? You know what I mean? <laughs> what type of porn you watch? What type of porn Matt? you watch? Matt. <laughs> I asked him and he was like, oh. Uh, 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 wait, what? He like took a big sip. I was like, I'll tell you. Okay. Which one yeah. you watch? Yeah, we uh, we usually say. Hey, Derek, where do kids come from? People's yeah. butts? Yeah. Storks? We used to think babies came from people's butts. I know. Well, here, Cute. since you guys are our avid listeners and since you guys are listening now, we'll give you guys the scoop on like who we interviewed, yeah. which is awesome. We interviewed Jared. Yeah. We interviewed Derek. It was a really good one, you guys. Yeah. Jared's Whatever you great. think of him. Derek Wida, Derek Matt Wida. Best. We interviewed Renee and Rouleau. Girls too. <laughs> um, she's a real a world renowned esthetician to the celebrities. She's amazing. Awesome. Amazing. Um, Aurine Jule, yes. who is like this very famous Israeli gun um, queen. What is he? Yeah, called? the Queen of Guns. Queen of Guns. She's amazing. Uh, awesome. I just wanted so to honest. be her. I love it. Yeah. Uh Anna Paulina, who's running for the Congresswoman of Florida. Tara Tara Keen, I'm terrible. Uh, yeah, Casey she was Curry, awesome. Buff, Cookie. Buff Cookie. Um, who else? Oh, Marissa oh, Lauren. Marissa Lauren, love uh, her. She was awesome. Yeah, and then also we had Heather Linon and Charlie Classic. Yeah, and then we had the porn star with the Drinking Bros. Um, small That's hands. A good one too. That was a really good one. Uh, who, who? Someone called it like couples therapy. I would just laugh my ass off. It kind of was. It was. Gr- it was like he. I mean, me and Ross got in a fight. <laughs> uh, he was like. I, you know, it was good. He was, he was like, you watch what? I know. Huh? You, and we I were like, like chill oh, out, chill, chill, chill. Um, but mainly he was just like, well, he was like, I'll do whatever you want. Like, and I was like, here's, I need to explain mm-hmm. sexuality to oh. you. Like sometimes you want to watch things that you don't necessarily want to have done to you. And if you ask any girl yeah. porn that they watch, like sometimes they'll go down a rabbit hole of like things that they would never want to have done to Correct, them. But they like, but watching they're just it. like, you like watching what other people are into as well, long as they're really, really into it and they're not faking it. Exactly. And it's not like the big thing is being seeing hurt or the something satisfaction or seeing them yes. really enjoy it or be into yeah. it. That absolutely. There'll be some things I won't watch cause I just won't hit my fancy. Yeah. But I'll, stuff like that too. I will totally watch if I know they're into it and they're loving it. And it seems very genuine. That's why I don't like, I think I was talking to Aaron small hands about this too of like I don't like the super produced where the girls are all done yeah. up perfect they don't even mess up their makeup the whole time no. and they're just like oh ah ooh. I don't like and the acting like, stuff I know you're either. not fucking into this yeah. dude like I know what it looks like when someone is really fucking into Correct. something right yeah so I think we talked about that yeah but like basically and yeah we had Jack Mandeville on oh my gosh I love him I do too sweet Jack Mandeville he's super sweet he hit me up after and was like thanks so much for having me on it was great meeting you I was like so Hi. Awesome. it was so great to like some of these people I kind of knew and some of these people you knew yeah. already and then we got to know them so much more after yeah. just kind of just sitting there talking with them yeah and we're really excited to share their interviews I mean we, we don't even say interviews right the no. conversations with you guys conversations and it goes to like weird places but I think that and random I think that these guys that you know from drinking bros open up to two girls in a completely different way mm-hmm. so it's just interesting to see these guys that you see being like oh fucking crazy soften because if you are if you're a guy that's not a big fucking piece of shit asshole if you're talking to two girls you're definitely going to soften a little bit you're going to mm-hmm. talking about different things you're going to open up differently so most they all did which I is really like great we saw 
I don't want to say normal because I don't want because them still like pumped up and one of the guys is still like them like that's normal still them. them but I think we saw like the everyday them that yeah they're like wives or girlfriends yeah. or like they're really close friends see yeah and so that's why we're so excited to share it with you guys because yeah. you guys get to see this different side of them that's like oh hey I didn't think we'd be talking about this or I'd be yeah. sharing this with you guys but we're let's talk about it let's talk about cool. it I guess we're gonna go for it yeah so you guys have the inside scoop Yep. listening to us knowing who we have and of course we want to get you know more people on too whenever we can is there anybody that you want to talk yeah, to yeah post malone oh okay well <laughs> that's that can be that's a dream you right so will, talk to xander yeah we'll talk to xander we'll be like hey xander so we'll go for don't di- have it on drinking bros anymore yeah get post malone for the for drinking bro ads yeah and one other it'll person be better. too so we're gonna go for opposite ends of the spectrum so okay. post malone i would love love um Brene brown like I would yeah. absolutely love. She just started, I guess, a podcast too. Yeah, I've been listening to all of her stuff, like the power of vulnerability, uh, daring to be brave. Um, you know, like the wilderness, like all of her stuff. Yeah, I yeah. love it. I love her. Um, because to me, it's you know, it's stuff that I need to hear. Yeah, and it's a good sober re- reminder that it's good to be vulnerable. And yeah. uh, I don't know, just being true to yourself and being open with yourself, and then everything else in life. Like it's, we all think that it's weakness and we take fear as weakness Mm -hmm. when instead these things can help us grow and they can help us become better if we don't keep just shelving them. And I think that she would be amazing to talk to. And I feel like there'd be like an epiphany, like every single time I listen to her, I'm just like, oh my gosh, can I have your brain? So that's someone else too. And we'll just ask her like what kind of porn she watches and stuff. (laughs) Because that seems to be our question. I would want to have Richard Simmons on. Can no we find way. him? If we f- if we could find Richard Simmons and have him on, we would be the biggest podcast of all time. <laughs> he's in I hiding. would do a fucking he's workout with him. He's in hiding. I would just he won't do come out. Oh, well, is he? There's Why? a rumor that his uh his maid or his housekeeper is keeping him um hostage at his house. Yeah. Is she in love with him? No, she's oh. just I think like just keeping him propped up. There's also a rumor that he's like had a sex change. No one can find him. I know. No well, one can talk to him. So that would be that's as we're bad gonna be, as if we're going to be the one to find exactly as much as we're getting share on is we're getting <laughs> yeah. fucking Richard Simmons. So after share, else? we'll have Richard Richard Simmons, Simmons on. Um, who else? I know. That's the thing. Well, one thing we're going to do, too, that I think that you guys would really like is we're going to do an episode of just everyone getting to know Jesse. Oh, right. And then just getting to know. Yeah. So we're going to talk about who you are and your life and like how you got to where you are. Mm -hmm. Because I know there's a lot of people who love you and who've been fans of you for a really long time. And they're really interested to hear more. I am too. Eight people. Oh, my God. There's eight really hardcore fans of mine. Yeah. (laughs) No, everyone's like, J balls, (laughs) James, team James. And so I think it'd be really good for them to get to know, you know, everything about you. Yeah. I'd love to know that too. And vice versa. Yeah. And then we'll do an episode all on you. Because I know people wanted to know more about your military background. And we kind of touched on it a little bit. But we feel very uncomfortable talking about ourselves. That's the hard part. So we were like, I am Jesse Wiseman. I'm a piece of shit. Fuck you. I you know. know. Like, That's <laughs> the hard part is like at one point, at what point do you sit there and it's taken as like you're either just trying to put out facts about you. And then how does that, where's that thin line of then bragging. you're bragging about you? Because, for example, we always learned that bragging is bad, right? Yeah. So I, I look at everything, by the way, that you guys post and that you guys comment on, whether it's iTunes, you know, oh, yeah, you do comments like I look at it all. Yeah. I look at YouTube comments and a lot of it, too. And I don't look at it to be like, oh, this person talks shit. I mainly look at it to see like, OK, what do people like? What do they don't like? Yeah. Um, you know, and by the way, if you're going to like one star our iTunes podcast uh, yeah how about you just let us know why we suck yeah don't right? just one star don't just one star it and put nothing write a review like, and write let a us review know. and let us know like hey you guys suck because of this yeah. so you know yeah. have a little yeah. have some balls you know what I'm saying come out <laughs> okay come out at least people on YouTube do which I like some guy would be like lame I'm like okay this is not his thing great he doesn't like it um, we'll remember his name and send him a fucking <laughs> box of shit. No, I'm all those shit on your fucking front. We'll send porch. you a flaming box of shit. No big deal. Oh. Thanks for the feedback. Yeah, I got too much time <laughs> on my hands to do that. But um, no, there was this one. So the people were making comments, right? They posted about women in the military and like 
of course, there's a lot of people who have <laughs> a lot of comments mm. about whether they should be in combat roles or not. And okay. women in the military, just in general. From that episode and, that we did? Oh, or? yeah. From what I was talking about. Like, one Were they guy mad was at like, me? No, it was mainly oh, okay. me. It was mainly me. The one oh, guy okay. was like, yeah, I think women should be in the military. Who's going to fucking make sandwiches and clean up kitchens? And I was just like, oh, that's <laughs> funny. You're so funny. You're so funny. Um, but another guy also was talking and said, like, hey, um, by the way, like combat controllers and PJs in the Air Force, like I know people give them shit in the Air Force all the time, but they actually like are legit and they go on SF teams. And part of me was like, I... I know, like, if you actually listen to the entire episode, yeah. you would kind of hear me say that. Say that, yeah. Maybe if you also knew my background and that all I did was, like, train and have friends and who were controllers and PJs. Yeah, yeah. You would know. And so part of me wanted to just, like, tell him who I was. Like, hey, do you know, like, let me tell you my background. Yeah. Right? And by the way, my husband's special forces. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Controllers and PJs are, like, barely on their teams. Like, go out with him. It's not all the time. Um, but... I, Part of me didn't want to like sit there and brag. Yeah. Right. And be like, do you be know like, who I you, am? If you had known what I. Yeah. Because that then, feels weird. Too. Yeah. And the yeah. other part of me didn't want to like name drop or anything else. So I'm like, what do, how do I, like, how do I say it? Yeah. So I think too. And I get a lot of girls who will be like, hey, can I hear more about your military career? Yeah. And I definitely don't mind telling people about it. It's just, it's hard because you don't want to sit there and be like. I did this and this and this and this. So then I'll just need to ask you and vice versa. And I'm going to do the same thing with you too. Yeah. So that we can like bypass the whole thing that we learned as a young kid that you're not supposed to brag about yourself. And we'll just let you guys know who we are without just saying it. Because I literally cannot just be like, well, this is what I'm doing. I know. This is who I know. This is who knows me. Like, I think whatever. one of the funniest parts when we were in Vegas is I think it was Casey. Casey Curry was like, "You look really familiar. Why do you look familiar?" And Casey, and but and you I just you made say, a joking comment like, "Well, if you didn't know, I'm famous." Well, I always just say I'm super famous, even if someone recognized j- me in joking. town. But I was joking. I was like, and then oh, she went, well. "No, I saw you in Range, range 15. Fifteen. She's like, you are." Famous. Yeah, I you like, are famous. What? I was like, nobody rec- no one recognized me from that. <laughs> unless we were like going to an event that's like range 15 event. Yeah. So I was just like, did not think in a million years that she would yeah. recognize me from that. So I was like joking about it, but it ended up being like true. I know. That I am seven. I don't know who it was. I'm gonna have to look him up, but one of my favorite comments from uh YouTube, we kind of mentioned it in the first episode, but some some person was like annoyed by one of the videos and was like, I'm leaving. I'm on following you guys. Oh, and yeah. And someone down below was like, hey, bro, this is not a fucking airport. You don't have to, you don't have to announce your departure to the entire fucking world. Just yeah. unfollow. I think someone And wrote, I loved it. I was like, I, I was like, I love you. I love I you. Love like, you, I, I wanted to message and be like, can I send you something? Like a we hug? say it. <laughs> and we even said it in that first episode. Like, hey, you don't have to make a big fucking federal case out of unfollowing us or not liking us. Mm-hmm. You can just unfollow, it. turn it off, minimize, and move on to the next Here's video f- that you might like better. Funniest part is that people act like someone's like holding them down, opening yeah. up their fucking I, eyes. I hate it. They're I like, hate it. got yeah. their fucking arm in an arm bar going, watch this fucking YouTube video. No, the girls are these so chicks. annoying. And yeah. it's like, no, it's okay. No. But you know what I love? And I just want to like shout out to all the people who've been messaging us and like constantly hitting us up with love on all of our pictures and posts. Yeah. You guys are what are, is warming my heart. You guys are the ones sitting there going and just reassuring us of everything that we're doing. All your love and support. Um, we're doing this for you. Yeah. This is literally for you. All the comments that we get about, hey, it feels like we're literally just talking to two girlfriends. Thank you yeah. so much. This is what I've needed in my life. Yeah. Thank you for telling us that. It means the world. Yeah. It, more than you know. Um, it I, we can say thank you all day long, but it doesn't do how much we love and appreciate justice. So thank you from and the I, bottom of our hearts. Yeah. And love the man fans. Oh my gosh. Yes. Love and there's the a lot of guys fans. who are out there saying, hey, we're getting our wives and we appreciate it. And they it. do. And then like. We hear you guys. Yeah. And I, I know that when your husband is like, hey, listen to these two girls. Probably. Like, this is what I would do. I'd be like, oh, why do you fucking like them? Do you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, you love them so much. Fine. But a lot of them are listening and actually being like, oh, I fucking like you. Yeah. 
So thank you, because I know I'd feel the exact same way. I know. If my husband was like, hey, I really like these girls. Check them out. Like, I'd be like, why do you fucking like them so much? <laughs> Let me see a fucking picture of them. That would be me. And then they see this picture of and us. And they're like, and then they're oh, like oh, oh, we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> just a couple of old gals talking shit. Don't worry. <laughs> we're not nothing. Um, oh, so what I'm going to do for you is I know that I say some sayings that just like re- that you just really love and that make you feel really special like sploosh my pants and lady boners and i found another one for sploosh my pants i'm gonna please. replace these please so from now on when something excites me like if we were to get post malone on i'm gonna be like girl that's about to flood my basement oh yes gross really which one do you want? <laughs> Which one do you I don't want? want any of them. But I do like. Don't you like I that one? I do though? appreciate you. Flood my basement. Ugh. Did you grow up with you know what basements one? in California at all? No, oh, we you didn't, didn't have basements or attics. No, I mean I think we had attics for random stuff, storage. Oh, maybe, see, but in Missouri we had attics and basements. basements we had to have basements because we were in Tornado Alley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I've I, heard of basements before. I've only probably been in one in my life. They were amazing because I'll tell you right now, as a child, you'd be like sitting, like just playing, and you notice the sky would turn lime green. Let's go. And we're like, Mom. Into the basement. Yeah, and then hail would come down. We're like, Mom, this is normal. She's like, grab yeah. the rabbits, grab the dog, <laughs> and get down to the basement. And we just grab down the there. rabbits. Yeah, we grab all had the a rabbit. dog. Grab the lizard. The grab lizard. your snake. Yep, that's grab how it was. Grab the gerbil. Grab the frogs. Especially in your house. Oh, we um, had everything. Do you remember <laughs> snail trail? Do you remember when people say my oh, snail trail? When did they say that? Don't you remember this? Do you remember hearing this ever? I didn't hear people. Girls like I left snail trails. What? No, I like, barely heard. If you're sitting on a chair heard- and somebody excites you like supposed post malone and instead of splooshing in your pants you leave a snail that sounds trail. more gross to me than flooding my basement or splooshing all my of pants. those all those are together they all run together to me flooding no. the basement splooshing snail trail the only time i've heard of snail trail is is um like strippers and stuff like if a stripper was on something and she left her snail trail snail on a trail, stripper okay. pole yeah 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 and so maybe that's why i just never associate it yeah yeah no that's but i'll have, I hear. well apparently wide on is another term that people like to use for and I don't love that one either. You're so difficult Wide to on. right now. <laughs> right? Like, can I we? I don't even know if there is one that I do like. Lady Boner, hate. Okay, so what Wide we're going to do is me. we're going to solicit our listeners. Okay? And oh, I no. want you guys to, like, just hit us up. What are you in doing? Our, what are you doing? Not even on our DMs, but on our pictures. And give, and give us what your guys' you best replacement terms for what would work better than lady boner and what would work better than blue sh- my pants because to our me our listeners are this awesome though i know they will it's just gonna be like the grossest <laughs> shit of all time put it on both of ours not just mine but it's uh, no i'm put it okay don't just put it on yeah you're not gonna put, put it, it on, on the Jesse's broettes. page put it on the broettes page no this is um, what ross will do to me i'll be like go ahead and hashtag go ahead and send your fucking things to jesse's instagram like so we're not doing that, but we're doing do the broettes. Yeah, do the broettes page. One thing I still like that some of the drinking bros do is they throw out the term um, power donkey, which was from the first episode that I ever did with drinking bros. And, and that was, was your term. That was that was what they used for me. That like, oh, oh. I think Ross asked if I had a nickname or something. Oh, and, and he I was, was like, like no, not donkey. really. And then he was like, was it power, power donkey? donkey? <laughs> and part of me internally was like, is this a fucked up name that you literally just gave me right now? Yeah. So I Googled it, right? And I did the Urban Dictionary and nothing really came up for it. So I was like, okay, like, I don't know what this meant. But he was like, hey, guys, go ahead and go to Tiffany's page and hashtag Power Donkey and everything. So it's still a thing. And I'm like, oh, and it's now a term of endearment. I like it. Yeah, I like it, too. So it's, you know, not something. Okay, so you're having them go to the page and do replacements for either Lady Boner, Mm -hmm. Wide On, Splooshing my pants, mm-hmm. snail trail, flood my basement, flood my basement. You guys are really intelligent and smart, and we learn a lot from you guys. Like the term "man fans" came from you guys. I know. And it's someone said one. hashtag Lady Gang the other day, which I thought was cute. I too. like that one. Yeah. So we appreciate it, and ahead of time, I very much appreciate it when we get lady boners in our fucking reviews on itunes because i know it makes jesse cringe uh. she just wants me to cringe basically i know um do you have a drinking brewet i do 
yes. of the week. And now we're back into, so the um, schedule that we're going to have, guys, is we are going to be going two times a week. We heard you. We did. The demand is there. We don't want you to have to wait a whole week. So we're going to be uh, Tiffany and I and then an interview um, just until the Vegas interviews are kind of gone. But that's how we're going to drop it. And there'll be two so, a week after that. Yes, yeah. Please. So we'll be doing a new drinking broette once a week. Mm-hmm. And then on the interviews, as you guys know, we ask them usually who they nominate. So but we are going to be getting through them for the week. So, yeah. So we'll make we sure. Yeah, just like you said, you have one. So we have this submission from David Cyrus. Okay. He said, hey, y'all, I've been listening to the podcast. I freaking dig it. Thanks. The reason the reason I'm messaging you all is to nominate my mom for Drinking Brew of the Week. Oh. My mom is Teresa, or Teresa Cyrus. Um, for the whole story, I have to start as a kid. So she was this wild and crazy mom growing up, riding four-wheelers and bikes. Love it. Um, two memories that stick out in my head is when she had our four wheeler sliding sideways around the house with the back tire bouncing off the fence, never letting up with my dad screaming her name, saying he's calling the ambulance. I love her already. Um, the next one, she's jumping on my sister's crotch rocket and decides to see if she can ride a wheelie, even though she's not been on a bike in 20 years. But the real reason why I want to nominate her is because four years ago, my dad was diagnosed with cancer. She stayed by his side through thick and thin um, during his fight um, as he lost his fight after the cancer metastasized to brain cancer. Um, and she stayed with him to the very, very end. Then about four months later, my grandpa passed and she took up, she took up caring for my grandma um, on my dad's side um, of the family for two full years. She took care of her until she passed just a few months ago. So she's been the one who's holding the family together all while still working and keeping up with her own dad, who's 85. So holy shit. So she's a caregiver. Oh, my God. Which yeah. is actually a new thing that people are starting to realize it's really is hard really really fucking hard and the suicide rate and just depression among caregivers we're now just starting to realize really? it and so um to be a caregiver for that many people back to back i mean this is a strong it ass is. bitch it is and you know what too it's really hard to see like your loved ones like your parents who took care of you right to see yeah. them towards the end of their time and like taking care of but them. it can be very it's, isolating too so like yeah. they're just taking care of them and no one's really taking care of the caregivers of yeah so i'm sure in some way it's rewarding to be with them yes. in their last moments but yes but women it's you hard. are amazing Teresa. so um she's one hell of a woman and i think she deserves the recognition and we do too yeah, David, we absolutely. So That's a thanks right there. for the consideration. Um, absolutely. Teresa Cyrus, this one is for you. You're Cheers. an amazing woman. Um, thank you so much for everything that you've been doing, uh, not just for your loved ones, but for everyone else around you. Yeah. So hell yeah. Good job. Good son you are. I love these. What a good son I you love, are. I love loving these. I always end up getting goosebumps. I know. Bumps. I and know. So, um, stay patient, patient with us, guys. Uh, we'll get to them kind of in the order that they're like submitted in. You guys have been doing a great job submitting them, so continue to keep doing that. Yeah, I'll shoot out a reply and say, "Hey, I got it. Thanks so much." And we'll read them in the show when we can. So, you guys, we're alive. We are alive. We're um, back from Vegas. We yeah. have a brand new sponsor. We have a new <sighs> set. We're real. I know it. And today we didn't really talk about anything besides just kind of what's been going on, which is fine. We need right. these. And I think we talked about like what we sort of learned from this show mm-hmm. kind of blowing up. We won't talk about that no. that much anymore. No. But we just need to let you guys know. This is just we're us, not fucking changing. Yeah. This is us being we're not real gonna with let you guys. us we're not gonna let it anything really get us down or change us. But I think it's good for everyone to take that, right? So we're yeah. everyone is gonna have struggles and successes in life. Yeah. Right. And I think it's really good to kind of just take a step back and look at your life. Um, just kind of like I did this weekend a little bit and just look at the people that are in it still that are still by your side when you were nothing, when even when you were struggling, when you're going through some of your hardest times. Mm-hmm. Right. And the people that are still by your side till this day, no matter what. And then the people who all of a sudden start coming out of the woodwork and then want to like use you or yeah. want to drain or leech off of your success or think that they're owed something when unfortunately they haven't been there for you during the hard times. And yeah. I think these are the moments that you look and go, Oh, okay. This is a great learning experience. And I think 
I think Will Smith even said it. If you're not there with me during my struggles, then don't expect to be with me during my success. I like that. Right? Will Smith I is like so that. intelligent. <gasps> Jada Pickett Smith. Oh my God. Wait, what do you say? <laughs> what do you say? <sighs> Tiffany, mm -hmm. will you accept this rose? Every day until the day I die. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's what I would say if I was on the fucking bachelor. Every day until the, the day, day I, I die. Because <laughs> I love you and I'm obsessed with you. They'll be like, okay. And this rose smells like will. potato chips. It really does. It, does. it smells like a gas station. Thank you so much for that. I know. Well, uh, lady gang, man fans, it's been a pleasure. We'll see you later. Thanks for joining us again. Bye. We're out. Yeah, you've been watching every move and plot. Next move on, every girl I'm moving on. Yeah, don't y'all better things to do.